Welcome to Save As Ability, a podcast to educate and inform you about disability employment issues. My name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Hey, everybody. Great to be back with you. It's David Darkangelo, another episode of Save As Ability. This is actually part two of an episode. Last week, we did, uh, or actually five minutes ago, but the through the magic of production, last week, we did the assistive technology survey, and then this week, we're going to do the all-consumer survey results. But uh, first, please help us out. If you could subscribe, like, share, comment, keep building our channel here. We keep getting great results, so uh, but it really helps our channel grow if you can help us out with subscribing and sharing and all that stuff. So again, uh, just as a little bit of a recap from last week. So as I was commissioner of the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind, uh, one of the things that I thought was important was to install uh, data initiatives at the at the agency. And really one of the ways I was modernizing the agency was doing that because when I first joined MCB, there was little to no data. Really, the only data we had was how many people were blind by community. And they didn't even track all the communities. They didn't even have all 351 cities and towns throughout Massachusetts. So we fixed that. We added 351. Uh, we put in uh, a short form, a long form. We have an electronic form. So now that eye care providers can communicate electronically and submit the reports of legal blindness electronically. So we we did all of that. But then we went further and we did a series of uh, reallotment projects and, you know, generated data that way. We also did these surveys building off of our short form and our long form. And the last episode, we talked about our assistive technology survey. Well, in this episode, we're going to talk about some results that came as a result of our all consumer survey. Here's the title page. And uh, if you'd like a copy of either of these, please email me and uh, or leave a comment and we'll get it out to you. Because I really think it's important to be operating in a way that is rational and data driven. That's how you're going to improve outcomes from an agency level and to be able to help consumers and improve our human condition the best to be able to measure against and and figure out what we're doing right or what we're doing wrong and how we can improve and things like that. So. All right, to some of the survey results here from the MCB All Consumer Survey. One of the things that I thought was interesting, uh, and this is matching to the uh, assistive technology survey. In the assistive technology survey, we had that, uh, what was it? This one has 9% of consumers read regular print. And in the assistive technology survey, that was about 15%. All right, so the way we can think about that then is, if this survey is valid, which both surveys are valid, they had great respondents rates. They're well within the margin of error, high validity in both. If you read the methodologies of both reports. Uh, so maybe then the 9% is the floor and then the 15% from the assistive technology, because they were specifically surveying on assistive technology, maybe that's the ceiling, right? So I think it's probably safe to say maybe 10 or 12% of all blind people in Massachusetts are reading regular print, right? And that is kind of a, you know, that attacks the archetypal metaphor that people have of blindness. Like, what do you mean you could read? You can read regular print. You're blind, like, right? So uh, in this survey, the all-consumer survey, 31% read large print. And in the assistive technology survey, that data point was 36%. So again, if the, the floor is maybe 31%, the ceiling's maybe 36, call it 33%, of all blind people are reading large print. And then when you add the large print and regular print together, that's what 40 something percent, or maybe, you know, even a little bit more of all people with blindness reading large print or regular print. Again, that, that is not probably what the archetypal metaphor of somebody with blindness, uh, people think of. So I think that's helpful right there to be able to program. And to give the society at large an idea of, of what's going on and the, the capabilities that people with blindness have. Now, not to diminish, though, there are a very significant percentage, and you can see this in the reports if you'd like. Uh, there is a very significant percentage that are not using those print technologies and they're reliant upon assistive technology to be able to get their information. So uh, now the all consumer survey, though, is not 
assistive technology specific to all of the questions. There are some that match and overlap, and that's good. But there's many that go to quality of life and living situations and things like that. So one of the data points that I pulled out that I found interesting was about a third responded that they live alone. And again, that may challenge the archetypal metaphor that people have. Like, what do you mean you're blind? How are you living alone? How are you shopping? How are you doing all the stuff that you need? Well, people with blindness can be very independent, very self-determined. And uh, so that's a data point that you can reference there. Approximately 82% responded that they get rides from friends or family for their primary source of transportation to do errands and, and things like that. That's significant right there. I think that really uh, speaks to the level of transportation that people are being able to utilize because then you look, some of the next respondents are all about public transportation, the ride and other forms of public transportation. So that's important in terms of uh, being independent and self-determined, being able to move around freely. So again, another AT point compared here says 57% use the internet regularly. So again, it's just showing you the high usage of technology here. Another data point out of the MCB All Consumer Survey that I thought was interesting was uh, visual impairment is closely related to the measure of well-being. So again, that's right out of the report. That's not just me. So I think that indicates that people with disabilities, the more significant the, or profound or severe the disability gets, that the less their well-being becomes and the less disability, the, the higher the well-being. And it indicates that in the report. So that's not just made up. That's data-driven uh, analysis and results that be able to help, that be able to tell you that. And so now you can program, now you can understand what we need to do to these services to make them better, to be able to serve consumers. And in this case, consumers with blindness and low vision but also people with disabilities. So again, these are just some of the results. I encourage you, please uh, email me. We'll send you these reports. We either the assistive technology one or the MCB all consumer survey. Uh, but now this sets a baseline and going forward, you can build on that and you can really start to analyze and understand these trends for providing these public programs for people with disabilities with the goal of making them independent and self-determined, which is that's a good thing. We want to improve the human condition. That's why we're here. That's what we're trying to do here at Save Visibility. So I hope you got value out of both of these episodes. I think it's important that we operate in a rational basis, talking about data and not just politics and not just, you know, making stuff up when it, when it suits you, but really going by the data to be able to inform us. All right. So we're going to keep at it. I'm fired up. Let's go. It's David D'Arcangelo, Save Visibility. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Help us get our message out. Great being with you. We'll see you next time. I hope you have a great day. For more information about disability employment issues, please visit our website, disabilityemploymentsolutions.com. The Save As Ability podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel at Disability Policy Expert or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment. Save As Ability lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com. Hashtag the new radio. Again, my name is David D'Arcangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>